Okay, so let's talk about Facebook ads. Right now with 1.8 billion users, Facebook is simply too big to ignore. And the way to reach them with your promotions is Facebook ads or FB ads. With such a huge platform, Facebook ads is the way to go right now because it gives you a highly scalable content promotion platform. You can target your prospects and rake in more conversions with its incredibly powerful remarketing feature. I'll share with you hacks which increase your marketing power on Facebook ads. First up, when redirecting your prospects to your promo pages or other sites, do you simply put in a website URL or turn a line of text into a hyperlink? Results show, as mentioned before, that hyperlinks convert better than web addresses. The reason is your prospects can be redirected to the website with just a click rather than having to type out the entire web address just to go to the website. The second part of this module focuses on ad positioning. This test finds out if your ad converts better when they appear at the right column versus the news feed. The result is your ads convert better when they appear on the news feed rather than the right column of Facebook. This is because most people focus more on their news feed than right column ads on their desktop. Plus, the right column does not show on mobile screens anyway. In your Facebook ads, do you put in a call to action or CTA? Is it needed for a simple ad on a person's profile? At this point, I think the answer is obvious. Ads with CTAs convert much better than without. This is because, as with other promotional efforts, a CTA gives a space for your prospect to make further action if they like what you have to offer in your ad like signing up or adding your product to their cart. Speaking of CTAs, which CTA button works best in your ads? Should it be direct or worded more tactfully? So here I'll share with you one example of high converting CTAs. The test explored the conversion between a buy now versus the learn more style CTA. The result was learn more buttons convert better than buy now. This is possibly because of your consumer behavior. They actually like to buy, but get turned off if they feel like they're being sold to on Facebook. Learn more mutes the effects of selling and sounds more like an invite to just click through and, well, learn more. Now we move on to the buttons themselves. More specifically, the color of the button. Which color converts best, orange or green? Test results have established that orange converts best. This agrees with color psychology, which suggests orange appears to capture attention better than other colors. Further, orange is a friendlier and warmer color, especially on Facebook, which is blue. What about other colors? Tests have been done on them, but orange still comes out on top. However, I don't encourage you using red as your button color. That color represents danger and warning to stay away rather than invitation. Power words are words which tend to compel your prospects to click through. Some examples are free, new, now, or instantly. So do they work for Facebook ads? Test results for headlines or subheadlines with these words bring in higher conversions than those that don't have them. So why is this possible? These words represent the edge your products have over others and effectively represent it with a single word. And as for the power word free, the answer is simple. Everyone loves free stuff. The next element you should look at is the element of scarcity, which in essence tells your prospect that something won't be available easily or is in short supply. Scarcity works for other platforms because if a product is perceived as scarce, it'll have a sense of exclusivity. Sales will also increase with the scarcity effect. Turns out, scarcity also has a great effect on Facebook ads. Ads with the scarcity angle convert more than a normal ad. There are two reasons for this. Your prospects will perceive limited items to have more value, and the fear of missing out if they don't click through soon will grip them. The choice is really yours to write a long title or a short title for your promos. Both types are proven to be highly converting depending on what kind of promotion you're doing. And Facebook ads is a unique platform with distinct headline writing techniques. Tests have pointed out that longer descriptive titles convert better than short ones. This comes down to being clear. Descriptive titles allow your prospects to read through and clearly understand what the ad is about right away. This will generate interest and clicks. In your ad pieces, what kind of titles do your prospects react best to? Is it a normal title or a title which snatches their attention? Should you ask a question in your title outright? Being descriptive in your titles is one thing, but asking questions does no harm, right? Well, titles which ask questions do get higher conversion rates than normal titles. They succeed in attracting your prospect's attention because questions trigger their curiosity. It also leaves an open loop for your prospects to fill in rather than a closed statement. In social media, the biggest driving force is the social element. No post is ever considered introverted. It always tries to reach out. Facebook ads with wide reach have better conversions, and it can be shown in the form of social proof. 
So I suggest you include social proof like testimonials in your ads as they convert really well. Success stories are great. They give others confidence that if the product works for others, then it might work for me as well. In your ads, there's a chance that you've included an image to accompany your text somewhere in the ad piece. So the question is, does including only images in your ads increase conversions? The answer? A big yes. Images have a massive appeal to your audience rather than just plain text. Ads with images feel real and authentic to your prospects. This feeling sends a message that your ad is honest and therefore worth checking out. Images increase click-through by 94% and only take an amazing 13 milliseconds to understand. Plus images, especially for your products, are 67% more important to consumers than detailed information, descriptions, and customer ratings. So do your ads feature a generic or specific image to accompany your promotional text? The result of this test shows that targeted images bring in better results than generic or unrelated images. A specific image strengthens the ad's clarity, allowing your prospects to have a better idea of what you're advertising. So what about the number of images? Does a single image work better than multiple ones? The answer is, Images which are arranged in a slider form convert higher than single image ads. Multiple related images make the visual element of the ads strong and spot on. Imagine a very interesting gallery. That's where your prospects will flock. In your ads, do you portray only your product or do you show it being used by people? The result for this test is ads portraying your product being used convert better. This is due to the human feel of the ad. Your prospects will perceive these kinds of ads to be user-friendly. However, if you can't actually show your product in use, you can use pictures of satisfied customers. It works wonders as the image can cut bounce rates by 27% and increase sales completions by 36% when tested on landing pages. How about videos? Are they effective in your Facebook ads compared to images? Tests found that video ads convert better than standard ads because videos can compress more information in shorter spans of time and the end result is more interesting to your viewers. Consider this, 85% of Facebook videos are viewed because dynamic visual elements attract and interest your prospects more than static ones. Hey, welcome back. Let's talk about webinars. So why webinars? They have many important and powerful functions in any marketing effort. A fairly recent survey from Quicksprout found that just over 60% of content marketers are incorporating webinars into their marketing strategies, at least occasionally. In essence, a webinar is great for the modern marketer because they're convenient and they establish credibility. Webinars have huge applications on training and education. They create brand awareness and they have impressive consumer reach. The first component of an effective webinar is attraction. This component serves to plan and attract people to your webinar and helps increase conversions. When using the attraction factor, the first thing you should do is profile your audience who suit your topic and value delivery by identifying which industry, market, or type of viewer will benefit from this topic before delivering your content. Using profiling works because it narrows down your audience to the most ideal ones who will benefit from your webinar content. The second element you can use is to reach out to people with social media posts. This means connecting with your audience via Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, whatever. Being social with your prospective viewers is the best thing you can do to increase viewership and engagement. This depends on the amount of social media sites that you utilize for your business. The one with the most engagements should be your main focus. The next thing to consider is the placement of webinar ads on your website. Should you put it right on your homepage or as a sidebar inviting them to join? The answer I recommend is both. Most split testing conducted by various market analysts determined that both ways convert well and each has no advantage or edge over the other. Now let's look at the placement of your webinar ads on your blog site. This section explores placing ads before the comment option versus the placement within the blog content itself. So which ones convert better? The result is ads that are placed above the fold generate more clicks compared to placing ads in the comment option or within the blog content. So if you want to direct more people to watch your webinar, do this. Timing is also important. The question is, when do you send invitations and reminders for your webinars? Do I make people register and attend the webinar within the next hour, or do I send out invitations a few days before and send out regular reminders? In this test, I found out that scheduling a webinar within days is the best approach compared to scheduling a webinar within the next hour, as it provides ample time for your audience to prepare. As for reminders, sending them out to attendees will increase your webinar attendance by up to 70% as there will be people who did not recall having registered. So in this part, let's explore the content of your webinar. I'll focus on the components that provide details and information of your webinar.
So how do you ensure your webinar titles look, feel, and sound good? Is there a formula available that can achieve this for you? Or do you just run and gun, type something, and hope it'll work? It turns out there's actually a formula to do this. I've tested this formula for a title, and here are some examples. On slide, how your target can enjoy this benefit by method of achieving the benefit, even if common objection. So title number one, how millennials can still succeed in online marketing despite worsening economy. Title number two, how you can increase your business exposure with SEO and edge out the competition. And here's the result. Using this formula allows you to use best keywords for a more effective title compared to just coming up with one off the top of your head. The reason is self-explanatory. The title answers the what's in it for me question, gives one method to deliver the benefit and addresses the obstacles which the webinar will help overcome. In your webinar, sometimes you'll need to have visual cues to direct your viewers to act on something like clicking on a button for a new lesson or simply clicking the like button. So should you do it? If you do, kudos, you've just added another element that increases your conversion. This is because a visual cue will help people understand or assist them in doing something, enriching the overall value they've received from attending your webinar. Another hack you can include in your webinar is adding open-ended questions that build discussions among your viewers. However, this really depends on the number of viewers. If your webinar has small viewership, then a viable option is you can ask a question every five to 10 minutes. Though keep this in mind, it can sometimes be time consuming, especially for larger audiences. For a large viewership, a dedicated Q&A session is best. This is so you can have more control over the questions and can limit the questions that you answer. Sometimes you can also drop a question between segments. This helps viewers stay on track and keeps their participation level high. Webinars work similar to conversations. The last thing you want to express in your webinar is just a robot voice droning out all of your information without any kind of feedback or conversation. So it's a wise move to build an intellectual and emotional connection with your audience in the webinar session. One excellent and proven way is using emotion. A sparing usage of emotion works because your viewers can relate more with the lessons you share. Emotions also help build authority and confidence among your viewers. On the other hand, I advise against using too much emotion in your webinars as this can interrupt the lesson and make you look a little unprofessional. An ideal way to end your webinar is by making a space for your viewers to decide. This is achieved with a call to action or CTA. Your goal at this point is to entice your audience to take action, usually to buy something or subscribe to your product. The recommended method is to include a CTA. This is because much like a sales letter, you've sold the dream and fulfilled the what's in it for me question. Now is the perfect moment to compel your audience to take action. CTAs work because they give more opportunities for your funnel and future promotions instead of just leaving them on the table or leaving your audience wondering what they should do. So what do you do to make your viewers stay? One highly effective tactic you can use here is to offer a bonus right after the webinar session ends to get people to stay with you until the end of the session. It can be a free download or extra training, something that just adds some value. A study found that bonuses increase viewership by up to 60 to 70% because more viewers will take action at the CTA and it creates a valuable opportunity for future business deals. Bonuses can be your way of saying thanks for them staying until the end. This increases the sense of value your viewers get and builds your reputation and trust. Your viewers like variety in your webinar. What you can do is develop a variety of slide formats to maintain their interest. And it works. Having a variety of points, graphs, quotes, or even just a simple picture is a great way to keep the visual and mental direction of your webinar interesting. The inclusion of graphical cues also keeps your viewers engaged longer. Now follow up, nurture, and ascend. These three words have great importance for the future of your business, and it applies to your webinars too. What should you do after they've ended? Do you just say goodbye or take this opportunity to engage your audience further? After your webinar has ended, you should include ways to further the relationship. A survey right after the webinar is a great tool to gauge what your audience wants from you next. In surveys, I found that open-ended questions work best because it gives a place for your viewers to give their opinions or feedback. This opens new opportunities for you to explore the possibilities and improve your future webinar sessions. However, you can also include closed-ended questions like ratings or yes or no questions to generate measurable data from your audience. Another great method to build trust and boost conversion is to send a series of follow-up emails with valuable information. By doing this, you'll send a message to your audience that you care for them, you'd like to keep in touch, and you imply to your audience that they matter to you. 
Split testing has been known to drive some pretty compelling results, but it all assumes one thing, that it's done correctly. There are numerous aspects that you can look into for split testing, and they can get complicated, but I'm here to make things simple and clear for you. So if you want to run an A-B test accurately and get long-term results, you'll need to do these three things first. Have a clear goal. Is your goal to drive traffic? Is it clicks or even opt-ins? A clear result is determined by setting a clear goal at the start. An email subject line that wins at open rate may be different than the winner for click-through rates. Define your goal first. Only one variable should be tested. In A-B split tests, it's important that only one variable is tested. For example, you published two bonus pages, bonus page A at 10 a.m. on Monday with a green colored buy button, and bonus page B with an orange button published on Monday at 1 p.m. Bonus page B wins in your click-through split test. But in this case, because there are two variables, you don't know what made bonus page A lose. Was it the button color or the timing? Random audience. If only your JV list sees video thumbnail A and only your buyers list sees video thumbnail B, can you straight away use thumbnail A if it wins in an A-B split test? You can, but it won't be effective since different groups react differently. The best way to do split testing, apart from analyzing the effect of changing just one attribute, is to test your attributes with a completely random audience.